we're going to have we let's create a new 2D 2D game object. Uh, game project, sorry. <laughs> so make sure it's 2D and I call it UI workshop. And any version, any version of Unity should work. So today we are going to talk about the UI components. So basically, what we are going to do today, we are, we are going to we are going to make a main menu and including setting. Setting the setting, we will be able to adjust the sound volume. Also, in the we are, we are also going to make a pause menu, and we also are going to make the time countdown work because remember the topic of the game is about stops and pizza guy reaching your home in a, in a given time. So yeah, we're also going to make this time countdown work. That's basically what, what, everything we are going to do today. Oh, also we are, we are going to add, a, add an audio, audio source for the for both the main menu and our game theme. Let's give me a version. I'll wait, I'll wait here for a little bit, for, for some time to wait, wait till you guys finish creating a project. I think we should be okay to going forward. Um, if you guys already download the package and just unzip it, you can see a package folder in there. Just simply drag it into the into our projects. Then you can see oh you can't reload scripts. You can see everything in the package, like it's mostly what we what we are finished in the in the trap workshop. And the, the new thing is like we have a music folder here, like the music is made by it's made by Sasha. Thanks, like though she's not here, but I still gonna say thank you, Sasha. <laughs> um, before we before before we start doing anything, so I'm going to delete the sample thing here because this we we will not do anything with this thing. We we already got a sample thing in our package. This this is this is not a necessary step. I'm go, I'm doing it because having two samples in our, in our folder would be really confusing. Like because when I tr when I when I take, when I trying to finish the workshop before before this workshop, like having two samples in the folder really com confused me a lot. So th we simply remove this. Remove this thing, I guess. Oh, it's not. Okay. So this is this is a thing we made in the last time. Because this is a new project, so before we doing anything, we need to make sure we make sure we get correct setting to so everything could work in here. So before, first we need to add a layer. So that layer is, use the layer six. We're adding a player, player layer. And use the layer seven, we're gonna add a road layer. Then we'll, we'll see the player and the and road are automatically setting, setting to the correct layer because they were setting to, player was setting to layer six and road was setting to layer seven. But they are just, didn't exist in the you know, new project. After we've done this, go to project setting. And in physics 2D, you can see a collision map, collision table here. And we simply disabled the collision between player and row, which is here. And after we finish this, go to uh, wait, go to quality. There's an option called anti-alias in here. We di just simply disable it. Because if we, if we don't, like, the, the, 
the graphic will be flashing. After we've done this, if you're going to a game, you can see the player is not collision with with the role. Um, the graphic, the grid works no, normal right now. So after we've done this first, we've done this first step. We can try. We can start our topic today, which is about making making UI components. So we just simply create a new thing. The way you create a new thing is clicking here, like putting the three dots on the right, top right of the hierarchy. Make sure it's this one, not, not this one. It's, it's this one. I mean, actually, three dots on the same line of the sample thing. Sample thing. There's an option called add new thing here. And then we simply delete the original sample thing. I mean, remove it, not delete it. Remove it. And in the, in the new thing, this, this thing will be our thing to make the main menu. So we are the, the thing we are going to do is first we're going to make a, make a title. Because I'm using a newer, newer version of Unity, so the, the normal text is hitting the legacy. If you're using a comparable older version, you can directly see the, no, the text in text inside here. But right now, my text is replaced by Text Match Pro. Well, the thing is, we we are not going to use any function of Text Match Pro, so I'm going to choose the text text in Legacy. Uh, I think we rename it rename it to Title. As long as you create a UI component, you can see a canvas is all is automatically created. Then we can hit F to Focus on the focus on the new title, and the thing is, it's created in the, in the corner. We want to make it in the in the middle, so I simply change the pause x to to zero. And um, we're trying to make it in a, adjusting the proper position, and the game. And I'm going to just make it make it in the middle, like make the text at the middle of of the block. And I will change the color to white because in the editor, the normal background is the uh, is gray. But in game, you can see it's blue because the blue is bring by is brought by the camera. The camera background is set to blue, so you can see the blue in the when you're when you playing the game or in the camera. But the normal editor is really black, so I'm going to, I'm going to use a white text here, so you can see you can easier to see it. The game name is th cost thirty minutes or less. Or you can name it any any name you want. So, like, we decided to name it to thirty minutes or minutes or less. And if you make make the font size larger, you will see you simply go over, go over the block and disappear. So, I'm going to make it around twenty. And I'm going to adjust the width of the block. Maybe to about. 400? Oh, it's too big. 300. High maybe 50. And we can even make it larger. 25 should be fine. 25 should be fine. I guess we should be fine. That's, good. That's going forward. So in UI, we create another... Oh, damn it. Wrong stuff. <laughs> Uh, create another. We create a button. We will have. We will implement three buttons in the main menu. The first one will be start game. The second one will be something like a setting. It will be something like a setting. The third one will be exit the game. Uh, I'll try and put it in a proper position. This one will be start. I'll just call it start. And the way we modify the text in the Texting the button is you can see a drop down menu here in the start game object. There's a text here. And because I'm creating a legacy button, so the text is not, in, not using Text Mesh Pro, so it's naming Text Legacy here. Because if you are, if you are going to use Text Mesh Pro, so Unity requires us to import a Text Mesh Pro package. That would take, that would take some, some time. Um, since we don't we don't even use any function text match pro function here, it's just a tutorial of how to make a main manual. So I'm not we're not going to take that time to import that package package. So I'm going to name it start game, or you can you can name it something like a 
start delivering or starts stop the deliver deliverer. And we can simply copy paste two more buttons here because it will be much faster. The second button we can say, call it setting. And I'm going to put it at negative 50. Sorry, negative. Negative. Oh, okay, it's too large, too much. Maybe, yeah, negative, negative 25 should be fine. And the third one will be access. Well, let me if adjust the, adjusting the text in the second one first. Third one will be exit. Um, let me see. Negative twenty five plus eighty five is negative one one ten. Oh damn it! Not this one. It will be negative one one ten. I think yeah, negative one ten. And we change it to exit. Does anybody need more time to do it? Okay, I guess we sh should be able to going forward. So already make a basic UI right now. So next step, we're going to make the UI works. So inside our script folder, you, we already have UI control. This one is mainly for, mainly for the in-game UI, but we can still reuse this class. I mean, this script. So double click to open it. And we're going to just simply make one more public method, public function here. So actually three more. So first one will be start. Oh, what? Okay, I guess I shouldn't name it start. I just name it start game. So because well, the way we are going to start game is simply a switch a thing. So, so the way we are going to do it at first is like we we need to save the thing and add it to a build setting. So, press Control Control S to save the thing. I'm going to save it to a thing folder. Uh, I'm going to call it main menu. And after we've done this, on the top top left, clicking clicking file and there's a option called build settings. In build settings, we simply drag our thing into it. The first one, uh, the first one will be main menu. The second one will be sample thing. Originally, the sample thing should be here, but we delete the original sample thing, so there's nothing here right now. <coughs> After we're done this, simply close it, and then we go to our script. So first thing, f first thing is we need using. Unity engine the scene management. And in start game we simply do scene manager the low scene. Oh actually a start game it would take an index. Oh actually it's not start game. Sorry. My bad. I will name I will name it to the low scene. And it would take index. It would it would take an integer value called scene. And this integer value will be the parameter of low thing. So basically, the one, the thing we are going to put in this integer value is the in the build setting. You can see there's a number number after each each thing. It's basically something like an index. That's how I understand it. That's the index is what we're going to put in the thing to load it. And for because we are going also going to make a pause menu later. So because in the pause menu, we're we'll, we'll going to adjust our time scale. So I, we, I'm going to adjust the time scale here in the low scene. Make sure the time scale is adjusting back to one when we are switching things. So I'll explain later. The second one, actually the second one will Load the settings. Load the settings thing. We will, we will not do it here um, because I don't I don't I don't like put a lot of thing in the for the main manual like because there are two ways to implement setting. The first way is like 
you, you simply put a setting in another thing. Um, when you are going, going with settings thing, you simply load the settings. You simply, simply load the settings thing. But the thing is that if we put, if we have an audio in the in the main manual, the, the audio will be replay if you are loading a new thing. That's why I don't want want to do so. I'm going I'm going to apply a second method, which which is like we are going to create an empty parent for a canvas canvas. And this one this canvas I have name into main. And I'm going to create a new folder inside a stats menu. Make sure it's a stats menu, not resources menu. I mean a folder, sorry. A stats folder, not resources folder, not, not a package folder. So in a stats folder, we'll create a new folder named resources. If you already, if you go, go to, go to the, if you go to, if you look at a video of introduction to Unity, you can, you, can, you will know like, there's a method in Unity called resources are low. Basically, we can look at, we can load anything in the resources folder by a given name. So the thing I'm going to do is like, I put this put this canvas as a prefab in the resources. Uh, we I'm going to rename this empty game object to UI and go back to this one. Um, let me let's finish the active button first. Active button will be really simple. Not this one. Sorry for the jumping. Like I just sorry for the jumping. Right? Let's finish this one first. The active button will be simply do after. We will simply be application .quit. Like this is a really simple, really simple line. Like it's Unity is doing this for you. So I'll go back to this one and keep forwarding. So since we are, we make a, we made a prefab. So when you go into a prefab to edit it, if we simply add it here, it will not be saved to the prefab. So we'll go to here and uh, assign the assign the function to the to buttons. So in the script, we simply drag UI control to start. And there's a plus man, there's an add button here. Just hit it and drag the UI control into the into the list slot. And we can see UI control here, and we can see. Because it's start, the start button, so we are going to do low thing and low thing one, and for exit button, we're going to do the same. Drag it. Oh, I didn't drag it. Drag it and uh, drag again. Do exit. Basically, this this method will be the method called when when we click it. After you, after you've done this, let's see what we actually we actually do. So first thing first, if you hit exit, exit in the, in the editor, it won't work because we're in the we're in the Unity editor here. As the exit button will not work in the editor. If you build a game, the exit button will actually work, but not in the editor. If we hit start, we will simply load a thing, load a sample thing. So the next thing is we are going to make the setting working. Before we before we make the setting setting working, we need to make a setting thing. So the thing I'm the thing I'm going to do is I simply because I'm going to re reuse some re reuse something here. So I'm going to simply unpack it, unpack the unpack man here. The main is already in the resources. So if we unpack here, it won't it won't affect the prefab here. First, for title, I'm going to change it to setting. And for this two button, we don't need it. We don't need it anymore. And for actually, I'm going to change it to back. And also in the text, in the, the text in the button, also going to change to to back. And we're going to have two new slider and the title. These two slider, one of them is for master volume. The second is for music volume. Basically, we do create UI. We create two tags. Tags will be still in the middle. Uh, this one will be master. 
also text inside will be master and change it to white so you, you, you guys can, make, can see it clearer clearer and this sound should be good too large I think 20 should be fine probably this place and then we're going to create a slider in UI there's something there's one item called slider it basically it's a where's, where's master 77 okay I'm trying to make make them horizontally same because it will be looks better and we can simply adjust its Y to make the size longer maybe 250 300 should be fine yeah basically a slider is something like we can simply we can simply drag it to change the change the value, value in there before um actually i'm going to copy paste this too I will, I will change the name of slider to music slider oh i'm sorry master slider oops so i'm simply going to do a copy paste so you won't won't take too long and then this one will be changed to music same as the text inside inside of it same as slider um, oh sorry there's slider and the next thing we're going to do is that we change the mean value to 0 0.0001 Same as the uh, middle slider. Change both slider minimum value to 0.0001. I'll explain. I will explain the reason later. Because we are going to do logarithmic. Make sure you change both master master slider and music slider. The next thing we are going to create a new script. Oh, sorry. Before we doing that, the entire thing is a little, little bit too, like, too close to, be, to each other. I think this, this one should be better. We are going to create a new script. I'm going to call it data. After we get into data, we don't we don't need we don't need to inherit model behavior here because this one will be a static class. And we don't. We also don't need any some, anything like voice start and voice updates. This one will will be mainly for recording some some variable. We're going to use player player prefs. So first, I'm going to do is like I create a static static floating value called master. In master, there are two two lines, the first one is get. Basically this one means like when we are trying to get this value, what we what it will return. It will return player player prefs. So basically player prefs is, can help us store some small value small value inside of it. So it will be get float. Get float master and the second one will be the default value. That if we don't have any master starting there, will will we return to us? Here I will do 0.5. That's what I already do. Second one is set. So basically, when we are setting a clear press, what we're gonna do it will set float, set float master with the value we input. And I'm going to copy paste there. Like, but this one we would, I will change it to music. Same as the two lines inside inside of it. And then we save it. I'll I'll take some. I will leave it, leave it here for some time. Then the next thing we're going to do is like we're going to create a new new. Also create a new script. Um, this one will be something like master volume, master master UI volume. 
I mean, I'm not sure is, is there any way to do this. I'm going to cr create two new scripts. I'm, I'm not sure is there any way to make this two scripts in one script, but I think there, sh there should be, but I, I didn't figure it out. So making two is uh, kind of the simplest, the most simple method, method I can find. <laughs> So in this one, we're going to use Unity Engine dot UI because slider is a UI component. This one I will do public slider slider. And in start, I'm going to do is like I set the set of value equal to data master because data is a static static class and master is static value, so we can simply call data data master. The way I'm the way I'm doing it because whenever we set I'll, I'll try to show you guys if what will happen what will happen if we are not doing it. I'll come come this one first, but you, you guys you guys don't need to do it. Because we'll we are we will uncomment uncomment it later. The second the second thing I'm going to put here is like the public a public, a public method called set volume. It's taking a floating value. Simply call it value. This one will do data dot master equal value. After we've done this, we simply clicking this one, clicking the master slider, and saying we drag this we drag this script into it and still drag it, drag it here. You can see there's new stuff here called dynamic floats. Just select this select this function. It means whenever we drag we drag it, it will be staying to the this one will be staying to the one like the the data the, the master will be staying to the value as same as same as the slider. Also, don't forget to drag the slider into the into the soft here, because we make it public. So let's take a try to see what, what will happen. Like the thing is, we we see the default value is 0.5 here, uh, 0.5 here. But the thing is, master is not setting to 0.5. That's why we knew. That's why we need this line here. So if we don't have this line, the default value of the slider will not be. When we, when we first time getting, getting into the game, the, the value of the slider will not be set, set the same as uh, the one in the data. Let's take a try again. Yeah, you can see this time, first time you're getting into the game, the slider, the slider value is set to, set, to correct, set to correct. And if we try to adjust it, and exit the game and get, back, get back to the game again, you can see the, the, value, is, the value is saved even if we close the game. So the next thing we're going to do the same thing to, um, to the music. I'm going to, call, I'm going to call it music UI volume. So the thing in it is going to be the same as the... Uh, going to be the same as the uh, master one. I simply copy paste it, but... The difference is like I'm going to change it to change the music. Does anybody mo need more time for this one? I guess we can proceed, and we we're going to do, a, do the same. We're going to do the same to music music slider. Make sure you set the set the master thing in the dynamic flows, because if you're saying to you're saying to uh, this one, I'm not sure. I don't think it will work if you're saying to non dynamic flow flow method. So this time we're getting the music done, and the next thing is we're going to add the music audio source, so we can add the audio to the into the game to see if audio will, if if the audio will work. Oh, before that, I'm going to change this, change this one to setting. 
the the thing the so the way we're going to add audio is like right click here and in in audio we will see there's audio source we simply add it and in this in this one we will sim we will drag the drag the music into the audio clip. So if we get into the game, we can we can hear the audio right now. Oh, by the way, I forgot I forgot one thing. I forgot I forgot to drag drag slider here. My bad, sorry. So we can hear we can already hear the the, the audio. The next thing we're going to do is we, we make the we make the UI work to change the audio volume. Before that. When you go into window, there's a ta there's an option called audio, and there's a audio mixer in there. After clicking it, you can see audio mixer window appear down here. The way we are going to do is we hit a plus button. I'm going to call it master, and you can see there's a audio mixer here, and we click we click on this, and we can see in the inspector, it will have attenuation here. We right, right click on volume. We can see an option called expose volume of master to script. After we're doing it, we can see there's a, something here called my expose, my expose param. We can, we can double click to change a variable name here. I'm going to change it to music. The, the way we are going to set the Set the volume is like we're going to. I'm going to create a new new script. I'm going to call it volume set. I'm going to a script. And still, I, we can simply delete the start here. And we're going to use image engine dot audio because audio mixer is part is in the it's in the audio. So the public will we'll have an audio, audio mixer public variable here. So in the update function, we'll simply say mixer dot set float. And we will use the flows, we will use the flow here. Make sure you are typing the name you're, you're, you're typing your name. My is music here. And we are not going to simply set the volume of master or music. So, because if you take a close look, you can see this one is from zero. To, it's from negative eighty to zero. It's not from zero to one. So the way that I'm going to do it is like actually this this one this one is from a tutorial I'm watching. I'm watching, so it's not it's not mine. So <laughs> mass the the log ten. And we time these two variable together. Oops. And outside outside the law, we time with time with time with twenty. So I will explain the reason here. So f because music and master is from. Oh, actually, I'm not entirely sure about. I'm not entirely sure about the, re the reason. <laughs> so basically, the co the conceptual reason is the conceptual. The concept is like log zero point zero 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 one is negative four, and <laughs> log ten one is is zero. So it basically, it's from negative four to zero, and negative four times twenty is negative eighty, and um, 0 times 20 is 0, so it's kind of from negative 80 to, to 0, but the thing is 0 0.001 times 0 0.001 should be 1 times 10 to the negative 8. I'm not sure why it's still working, so. <laughs> I guess there's a clamp function hitting there. So, that's, go, that's going forward. <laughs> So for this one, first we assign the output to master, like in the audio source. We assign the output output to master, 
and redrag the volume setter here. And make sure you drag the audio source in. Oh, no, not drag the audio source. You click on the button right to the slots. Just, you can see the master here. Let's take a look again after we get into the game. You can see when we're adjusting, the sound is getting, the sound volume is changed. Yeah, the audio, the audio is working. So since we're getting most of, most of item down, so I'm going, I'm also going to set, see the setting as a prefab. Oh, does anybody need more time to for the audio source? Like, is everybody good? Okay. So the next step we're going to do is to make the main menu working because right now we cannot switch in between different different paging main menu. The way I'm going to do it is like I'm going to have a Make a new script calling main menu control. Actually, I'm thinking, do I, do I really need a new script? Oh, right, I, I do. Oh, wait, actually, maybe not. I can still, I can try to reuse the UI control. Maybe I will fail. I'll, it's a kind of, kind of risk. <laughs> if I feel it's gonna waste a lot of time. <laughs> so I'm going to, do here is called public void load manual. Take a string value. Um, I gonna call it name. So first of all, I gonna find the manual, the UI game object inside inside the thing. And I'm going to save it as a. I save the UI. And next thing we're going to do is uh, instantiate. Instantiate and inside instantiate, we're going to do resources of low. It will load, you will load low item from resources folder by the given name and as a game object. And you will you will instantiate inside the UI transform. And the next step you we're going to do is uh, you destroy the first the first child inside of UI. Alright, let's take let's take a try here. So going to a setting prefab and inside back button, we're not going to use using exit exit here. We're going to do load manual and we load main. It's main, right? Yeah, it's main. Okay, let's take a try. I hope it work. Oh, it, it do work, but it doesn't. It doesn't destroy the original. Original. It doesn't destroy the setting. I don't, I don't know why. Cannot remove. Wait. What? Oh right, I forget it. Make sure you destroy game object, not destroy the transform. Like transform is just a component inside game object. Like I made this. I made this error a lot of time. So after, after we're adding it, let's try again. Yeah, it works. So after we hit back button, you will load, you will load main scene. So we're simply doing the same style on main. So in in main uh, setting here, it will do oh here UI control. 
and load menu and load setting you setting right yeah you setting so let's take a look again see what will happen yep it work we can switch in between setting and the uh, main menu and the audio source can continually play because we're not switching things the audio the audio source will, the audio will not be replayed if we if we print setting a different thing the audio will replay and after we after we implement an audio audio in the in the sample thing you guys can take you guys will notice that so actually we are we are we are done with this, we are done with the main menu so make sure you save you save the thing before you are quitting it you are you are, before you remove remove it next step we put back to put back the sample thing and remove the remove the main menu. So inside samples, the next thing, the next thing we are going to do is we are going to make a pause menu. So first thing first, uh, I'm going to do is I I'm going to make a new panel in UI. Just make sure make sure like we have a place to place to place the pause pause button and pause text. Well, you guys can see the the panel is too large. And I'm going to do is first thing. First thing is like let's click a anchor preset and click the one at the middle. This one means that it will adjust the like actually I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> it will adjust based on the middle position, I guess. Uh, we can try to make it smaller. Oops, too small. This one should be fine. And I prefer to mix the uh, alpha to 200 because 100 is a little bit too um, too invisible. Like you can barely see, you can even you can barely see the text on it if you make only 100. The next thing is that I put a put a text here as a as a title. Text will be this one is a pause, so pause. Make it a same, make it a center and make it large. Make it up here and next thing we need to make two button two buttons. The first one is will be Resume. Same as text in there. Oops. Uh, I can't think copy paste the first one. The, the second one will be exit. Basically, you exit to the main menu. And I will try to make it a proper position. Should, this one should be alright. So the next thing we will do is make the we will do is trying to make a pause menu. Uh, I'm sorry, make the pause code. Oh, before that, we go, we're going to make the pause make the pause button. So in right click on, right click on canvas and uh, in legacy, just <coughs> uh, we implement, implement a new new button here. Uh, I just simply going to make it like let me pause and. Um, the text will be paused, and this this one will be pause button. And I don't have a texture for it, so I just simply going to put put text inside of it. I know I know this one looks really ugly. I'm sorry about that. Put it on the top left. So the next thing I'm going we are going to do is like trying to make a pause. For, Pause function. Before that, I'm going to do is that I make a new script called game manager. Like I don't I don't use a lot of game manager actually. Like so this kind. I mean, so it's kind of odd to create game manager at this at this point. <laughs> So 
So inside of it, I'm going to first we're going to create a public public variable, public gamma gamma object variable called path. This one basically is a path is a path menu because well when we pause, we need to call up the pause menu. So let's have a public function here. Public function here, that's called pause. Uh, wait, why is... All oh, right, I already defined, so... Just make make a pause. Just lower, just make the first, first one lowercase. So first thing is that we need to set time scale to zero. So the, the so the way this thing works is that when we set time scale to zero, everything related to time related to time is kind of paused. Something like real time things start up, um, time dot delta, delta time or time dot time. These things are all paused. So everything. Everything based on time. Dot, everything relying on time are are, are are stopping kind of. So for example, like in car control, like because every, every time it's moving, you would do current speed times time dot delta time. When you set when you set time dot time scale to zero. It will simply stop there. That's why we. That's what we are doing here, and that's why we are reset reset the time dot time scale back to one. Because when we are trying to do like, because we are going also going to make a win menu. If if we win, we will definitely pause the game. But I will also put retry, retry button there. If we re retry, we will we will load the, load the current scene again. But things, the thing is, we already pause the game, but we we load the same result set a time time scale back to one, so everything will still pause there. That's why we're having a time the time scale equal to one here. And the next thing we're, I'm going to do is like we call call a pause menu. So pause dot set active to set active to true. But one thing I'm going to do is like before this is like I'm going to modify the player control because in player control here is not relying on time dot delta time. So it means that even if we pause the game, the player will not be paused. So the the way I'm going to do is first thing like uh wait where's speed? Oh here. We change we capitalize the speed. Just capitalize the first first character in speed, and in here we we set we set a new speed e equal to speed time time the delta time, and then we set the default value of speed to one hundred. Just make sure everything remains the same. I'm going to test in the game. Um, I will hide the post menu post menu for now. Yeah, player still working properly. So if we are doing this, then we can pause the player as well. So get back, go back to game manager. Game manager. So the other, oh, actually, the other thing we need to do is about car control, because even though we pause the car, the car, the car also doing acceleration here, like. Look, the, the acceler acceleration here in cars does not rely on rely, re relying on the time dot time scale, delta time. So the the way I'm going to pause the car is like I create a new function here called I mean I create a new variable here called active. And active default is default is true. And if I active equal to false, you will simply return return the fixed update. Also, you will build a new function called set active.
basically when when some function called set active false, you will stop the you will stop the you will stop the update here. Uh, sorry, I'm a little bit too rushed. Does anybody need more time? Are we are we okay to proceed? Okay. Yeah, and next thing we do is like actually I'm going to assign a car here. Set active false. That's how it looks right now. So and since we already got this thing, this this stuff, we we only, we also need a method called resume. Oh, is it called is it called resume or resume? I'm not I'm not sure how how to read it. Resume. resume. Thank you. So in in res, resume, every time scale will be set to one, and this we we're doing everything inverse from pause. It's actually false, and this one I simply copy paste it. Car control will be set, set to true. So let's get, go back to the game. So the the way I'm going to oh actually one last thing to do uh, to do something with the pause and pause and resume because. We're doing we, those two functions are inside of the. They are inside of the game manager, but there usually there can only be one game man, game manager in the game. But so we cannot assign it to assign game manager to some button. So I'm going to do is like, I'm going to assign game manager inside to a certain certain game object. I'll call it manager, and just assign it, assign it to here. Also in the meantime, assign all the variables to it. Uh, I'm going to do is like I create another pause and re resume function inside of UI control. Uh, inside of it, I'm going to do is like I find the uh, you will find the manager game object and get component of it uh, and call call function that you should call. Same as, same as a resume. I'll simply copy paste it, copy it faster. After this one is done, let's go to here and just simply assign these two stuff to these two buttons. This one will be pause and this one will be resume. Uh yeah, resume. Okay, let's take a look at that. When we are hitting Okay, thing the thing is pause, but I don't know why it's not calling it. Calling the pause menu, or I might assign it reversely. Oh right, I find that I, I assign it reversely. I, I assign, assign car to pause. As I assign pause to car. Damn it! Now it works. Now even if I hit, I'm ready. These cars cars also pause, and the acceler acceleration is also paused. Yeah, and to make to make sure pause is is actually work. So I'm going. To, last thing I'm going to do is I, I assign UI control to here. Um, that I call load manual load zero. So if we pause again, or what? What the.
Oh right, it's, sorry, it should be low thing. Sorry, it should be low thing. <laughs> low thing there. Oh. Yeah. And the last thing we're going to do today is we implement uh, the time, the time, the time countdown on top of it. The way I'm going to do it is like. I'm also going to do a win and fill button, win and fill manual, but this one will be really easy because I'm go simply going to copy paste the pause manual. But if you're making an actual game, don't do that because if you're doing this, win and fill manual will be completely the same. The player will find the win or game over didn't get anything different. So don't do that if you're, you're making an actual game. That'll be a gain and <coughs> last one still be exit. The, the only difference is again it will be it will also be low thing. But it's low thing one. So basically low thing one means load the current thing load this thing again, so everything will be reset. We also copy a, copy again to make it to make a fill menu. So as I say, don't don't do this if you're making an actual game, because the player will, will feel like will not feel satisfied when when they are actually win, actually win. Yeah. So basically, we simply change the title of it. Everything else are remain the same. So. After we are doing this in pub, in game manager, I'm going to get two new game object called win and fail, and also will be some new new variable here. The first one will be a public full called total time because though this game costs thirty minutes or less. But we definitely cannot let a player wait there for 30 minutes. So we will allow, we will set our own time as a total time. So basically if, if we reach this time, it means like the player win. Also we're going to, going to have a pub, the private, private time. It mean, it refers to, a, uh, also we have a public, public uh, function here called ready. Also, we have a we should have a bool out here. Also call ready, but this one is this one is a lowercase. Initially, we set ready to false because when player hit ready, we are going to set the ready to true. So in ready function, we set it to true. Um, here initially set it to false, and when the player set, hit ready, the time starts to. The time will start rolling, and in update we said if ready is equal, it will false, it will return, and if we find time dot time minus this time if larger than total time, larger or equal actually, but it doesn't make any difference because for flowing value, especially for rolling flowing value, it's really hard to. It's really hard for them to, to equal each other. If we find it's, it's larger than total time, it means like the player wins. So we call call out the win win manual and set a time scale to zero to make everything to make everything stop, especially for for players make players stop because cars are the cars already stop. So chain car chain car. Um, Car control is not not necessary here. Also, make ready to true because we don't need we don't want to run the update. Up, up, make, make ready to false because we don't need we do, we don't want it to run the update function anymore. And if also we're going to have a public 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 slider here. Uh, 
Um, wait, is it going to the side? Yep. Oh, right. I forgot using UI com UI UI. I start here like because we will update the start of value to make a clear better, better seeing how the time is going. So I'm going to, going to do here is like the value equal to I'm going to use master clamp here. The way the clamp works, it will, it will limit the value between min and min and max. If it go go below min, it will set it to min. If you go over max, it will set it to max. So the value here will be time dot time minus time divided by total time. Theoretically, this one will be will always be zero between zero and one because time is time is initial initial by as a time dot time. And if time dot time go over total time, it will simply stop running running the entire thing. So theoretically it will be it will be between zero and one, but just just in case I still do a clamp, clamp function here. So let's take a try of how it works. Before that I'm going to create a new style value here. Wait, just make sure I'm Yeah I'm recording. <laughs> just make sure I'm recording. <laughs> Okay, there's UI, UI slider. So this one I'll call it time. Um, this one will be on the top. To make it look better, so first I make I will delete I will disable handle area, so it will look looks like looks like this. The second thing I will make it much much wider. Yeah, this one should be better, and I will make it about. 40, 40 height. And for the filling area, I'll try, I'll show you or, originally what, what the filling area looks like. So for this one, slider fill wing. And total time I'll say to 15, 15 right now. Let's take a look how it, oh wait, I, I forgot one thing, sorry. In in UI control, like in setting here, we do game object of find manager component game manager dot ready because we need to call call ready function in game manager to make everything started. And let's take a try right now. You can see the the time is starting. It start going. But right now we don't have any fill mechanism. We don't have any fill mechanism, so we'll we'll always win. And you can see if we don't adjust the filling area, there will be a little little gap here. So what I'm going to do is like. Filling area. I'm not sure how, how this one looks like. <laughs> so right now we need a we need a fill mechanism. So the the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to modify the game manager, so to let it take a public public variable which contain the destination, like public vector three three int I think, and destination. The reason I'm doing it because like if I manually input destination, it will be you, will, I mean, I, I'm not really suggesting you to do it because manually input destination will, if you if you int, if you decide to change the destination, if you manually input it, it will take a lot of time to change it. So 
I'm suggesting you get you play you play you play at you have a you get a destination from a fixed value from value and as long as you want to change the destination you simply change the value here. So because I'm doing this, so in the UI control I should also do um this one. So Oops, no. Component game destination. So th this this one should be fine, and eventually, in game manager, so in update we will check the game, we will check the car position position. If car if car is at at a destination, we we think a player is is fail. Uh, destination dot x because um, remember if you want to tr translate the the grid position to actual position we need to add point five to it. This one is fill, so basically it's still a thing, but instead we call it, call it a fill. So the last thing I'm going to do is like in manager we manually we set the stuff here. It's still manually, but the thing is that as long as you want to change the destination, you can directly change it here. If you directly put it here, you need to, if you want to change the destination, you will, you will need to change both this position and uh, and this position. If you miss the position, the game won't work. All oh, right, let me change the time to. 20. So the car, the car will have enough enough time to reach that reach the destination. I'm blocking you. <laughs> yep. So yeah, and. Last thing last, I'll add all your source here. I forgot to do it. And this 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 one should be the last thing today. Oh, no, not this one. Yep. So yeah, that's everything today. Thank you.